Starting with the kick drum. I like the hump that's in there. If you look in the upper right hand corner, I've rolled off at around 100 to kind of keep any really low bass from just crazy killing my speakers. So what I'm going to do is add Ceilings of Sounds Pro on this kick. And what I like is that you see how this curves up. I can actually take one of these bands and actually see it curve. I haven't seen that in too many EQs. So what I'm going to do is just turn this curve down. Beautiful. So I can basically shape it to any curve that I want. And the kick drum, the second kick drum, this is the heavy kick, is going to take up this space in here around 200. So I'm carving that out for that second kick drum. And we'll go to the second kick drum. Turn that on, turn this off. It's kind of a ratty kick drum, listen to that. Let's pull up ceilings of sounds pro. Put this in. I like the dirty edginess of it, so I want to get some more of that. There we go. Try those two kick drums together. a conversation going on sounds like like it like it. okay cool keep it keep it moving so now i'm on to the third instrument what's good about seasons of sound pro is that i'm moving i'm actually not futzing around too much with trying to get the sound that i want i'm actually kind of have an idea of where I want it to go and how i want to get there and ceilings of sounds pro the cq helps me get there So let's get some of this cowbell out of the way of the kick drum. And I love the brightness of it. So let's let's get some of that. Oh. Ah, if we look in the upper right hand corner, we see we're between 500 and 200. We are peaking and we can see that right here. So let's just kind of, I like the sound of it, so I don't want to take too much of it out, but I do want it to be within the pink noise slope. So I will take some of that down. Beautiful. And let's see what we got with these two. Doesn't sound like much now, but we're, we're working our way through this, this track. So we're now at the metal bar. There we go. So what I'm doing is I'm doing everything based on pink noise. So if I turn on my test oscillator, there we go. Everything, it's, t it's showing me that slope right here is showing me where a perfect mix would be and what it's going to sound like. So what I do is I go through each instrument and I make sure it's within those pink noise parameters. And this one happens to be pretty loud, but I kind of, sometimes I just go against it and say it sounds good and I'm just going to leave it there. So in this case, let's see. I could be a little louder. So if I listen to the track so far, beautiful. Mm -hmm. Love it.
Beautiful. Sounds really good. All right, so now let's go into, let's just look at our bass. We've got our drums set up. And our bass is... Everything sounds great. I mean, but yeah, I like the character of the bass, so I don't think I have to do much to the bass. So let's listen to the bass and the drums all together. Okay, not bad. Again, the efficiency of ceilings of sound is what I'm after. So. I basically can take this and send it to a writer or another musician and say, hey, replace that bass line if you can, or a string arranger or a horn arranger, which is what I'm going to do because this is for uh, for a film and I want to use other people. If you make money and other people around you make money, then that's good. So oh, we have one more instrument we haven't messed with. Let's see. All right, so if we look in the upper right-hand corner, we see around 500. We we probably need to let's take that down. It's going to be within the pink noise parameters, but what I want to do is kind of control that frequency. I don't want it to get out of hand. Here it is right here. That's what I like about this EQ. I can see it. A lot of engineers will say, you know what, you should use your ears, but the people who consume the music don't care how it gets mixed. They care how it sounds once once it's mixed and what what the song is about. So I'm into the I'm into getting it to market. You know, there are special skill sets that you could use, you know, by using your ears. Because if you don't have this EQ, you got no choice but to use your ears. But if you got this EQ, you don't gotta use your ears. You can use your, you know, shoot. With this EQ, you don't even gotta use your ears. Let me cut down on some of this. All right, there we go. I like the brightness. That's good. Okay, so let's check that with our pink noise real quick. Beautiful. It's in a good space. So there we are. So we've we've gotten through our bass, all our drums right now in minimal amount of time. You okay? Well, let me let me let me let this drop. Beautiful. Now, if you look at the pink, the slope is, there's a big dip here, but that's okay because a vocal could go there, um, a lead instrument can go there. We just want it to feel good. And this is like a decent rough mix. All right. So our last but not least is our chordal instrument, which will definitely increase horns, strings, um, vocals, who knows? Sky's the limit. Um, here we go. Beautiful. I like this. All right. So we've got a lot going down here below 20. So we're going to cut that. Cut that. There we go. See, look at that. Look at that. Beautiful. And you see how it's right in the slope. We could tone it down if we wanted to. But, and, or I, I could do it here. Beautiful. Now, if we put it all together, this is what we got. And this is just one of the great things about ceilings of sound is you you just burn through getting your decent mix up until, you know, you're not spending too much time EQing. Here it is. Now, notice nothing is panned, and you're listening basically to this in mono. If everything sounds good in mono, when you put it in stereo and you start panning it, it really starts to come to life. So this is good. Wait, 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 wait,
So there you go. Ceilings of Sounds Pro. It will get you to the next step in completing your song. Have a good one. Loving your energy.